Lord. That was the Revelation song. Phillips, Craig's, and Dean. <laughs> Very good, guys. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the house of our God. Amen. You know, with the uh, sign above my head, you know that we are celebrating 35 years of ministry. Yeah. You know, praise God. Amen. Amen. I mean, we could never thank God enough for that. You know, 35 years ago, we started in my father's living room. Handful of people. And uh, 35 years ago, God knew exactly who would be sitting in this house today. He knew if this was going to be your thousand time here or your first time here. God knew. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And uh, uh, he picked the house and made a house just so you'd have a place to come to. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Praise God. You know, we are going to celebrate our, our 35th year this year. And, you know, as we said last week, we always want to make our mission statement clear. And as we mentioned last week, once again, our mission statement is very simple. We are called to mature the body of Christ. And uh, to make it perhaps even more, um, more uh, easily known, we're called to bring some kind of maturity into the church house. Amen. Now, that's a beautiful calling as far as I'm concerned because it's our calling, you know. Sometimes God, you know, you do a lot of hooping and hollering and you're, and you're faithful in so many things you do. But sometimes God wants you to know why you're doing what you're doing. And sometimes you go to church and you do your religious things for so much of your lifetime, he wants you to know that there's purpose in it and it's supposed to accomplish something. Like you're not always supposed to remain guilty and you're not always supposed to remain broken and you're not always supposed to remain sick. Like the church house has to have a purpose and it's supposed to make you well. It's supposed to make you strong, right? It's supposed to make you confident and happy. So 35 years later, we can only hope <laughs> that you have some of that. <laughs> Praise God. That's right. So um, uh, I think God wants to speak to us. I, I believe even in regard to our anniversary last year, I believe, um, or last week, I believe our theme was age to age. For God has taken us through the ages. And whether you've been coming to this church for 35 years or not, God has taken you through many ages, hasn't he? Yeah. And he brought you here today. You know, the road that you traveled brought you here today. So I say that that must mean something, that God wants you here. Don't you think so? Amen. I think God loves you enough to have special moments in life. He brought you here for purpose. He wants to say something to you. And that's the only guy I want to listen to. Like, you know, you hear the commercial, the old commercial, when E.F. Hutton speaks. <laughs> listen, I only want to listen to God, don't you? So the theme is age to age. Um, if you were here last week, um, if not, maybe Brother Keith can help you in some way. Brother Keith put together a, a, um, a montage for us of all the years we've been through. And we saw the pictures and, 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 and the years that God brought us through. Some of you loved the pictures. Some of you hated the pictures. <laughs> like, Lord, I was such a wreck. <laughs> yes, some of you were a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> but God brought you through the years <laughs> and you're looking pretty good right now. <laughs> we had a chance to call my brother Richard. You know, Philip and I are not the only two brothers. We have one more brother, Richard. So we had a chance to call our younger brother Richard last week and say, Richard, do you remember when? Do you remember when? Do you remember when we didn't have a church building? Do you remember when? We met at the high school auditorium on Sundays. And then we met at St. Anselm's on Tuesdays. And when we couldn't get into the high school auditorium, we went to the golf clubhouse down the road here. It used to be called the Admiral. Do you remember when? We would go in the, in the morning and put our signs all over the Lehigh Acres. People must have hated our signs after a while. Like on every, if you were coming from Fort Myers, we had a sign. Okay, turn here, turn here, turn here, and then, ah, you're here. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. But our theme, I believe, for our 35th year is age to age. Trick and, 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 and uh, Brandy and Tigaloo, you, you sang a special song last week um, in regard to our anniversary, and it was Amy Grant's El Shaddai. El Shaddai. You guys know the song, El Shaddai? 
And um, that takes us back to, I think, God, I think God wants to take us back. I think he wants to take us back and remember and, and then bring it forward. You know, God does that. You know that, right? Because your yesterdays were important. And, and yet your yesterdays have brought you to where you are today. And sometimes you don't always understand what's going on in, in your yesterdays because they're filled with so many things. You know, it takes time sometimes to figure out what you walk through. Amen. It takes a lot of time sometimes to figure out why God let something happen to you and why you had to do something. Yeah. Do you remember when Jesus would heal certain people in ministry and then he would speak to them? Sometimes it's confusing. He would just like heal the blind man and he would say, tell no one. Tell no one. Because I believe that um, you need time to reflect on what just happened. Because if he went and told someone, he might have went and told everybody I got healed from my blindness, but he didn't realize the inner wound that was healed. He didn't realize that God made him whole. And, and that's why God said, don't say nothing just yet. Why don't you meditate on what happened here today? Because you don't know what happened here today. You met God in the flesh and God touched you and every generation through you. And don't, don't, don't I'll tell no man nothing as if you just had this simple happening today. Today was no simple happening. And I say to you today, today is no simple happening. Well. I believe God meets us because he's an extraordinary God. And we're his extraordinary people. And I say that no meeting is a small meeting. And every experience with God is like a burning bush experience. Amen? Amen. Do you want that? Because if you want it, you can have it. That's how much God wants to give himself to you. Amen. So through the years, Amy grants El Shaddai, El Shaddai, which means almighty. And, um, you know, God has brought us through the ages. That was 1982. I had to look it up, brother. I thought it was earlier, but it was 1982. Does anybody remember Amy Grant's Age to Age album, 1982? It brings us back because, um, you know, man, God was moving back then, and, and our ministry started just a few years later. And, uh, you know, some of the other songs that were on that album, Phil, I was listening to it, Pastor Phil. The first one was In a Little While. <laughs> and those of you who might know the album. But I think uh, one of the uh, more interesting ones I, I forgot was on the album was uh, Sing Your Praise to the Lord. <laughs> So um, I think God wants us to, wants you to, wants us to look back a little bit and reflect. Think about some of the things that you've experienced. Some of the people that were in your life that perhaps are not in your life. Maybe they still are in your life today. But God wants to speak to you through the ages today. He wants to tell you where he brought you and why he brought you through it. And that's what makes today really extraordinary. Because it took God a lifetime to get you here. Amen. Amen. And what you lived and what you experienced and who you are, it's valuable. Amen. Amen. And you need God to tell you that because only God knows. Mm -hmm. Only God knows. Mm -hmm. So I believe that God wants to speak to you through the ages. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to Isaiah, the title of our conversation age to age age to age Isaiah chapter 57 I'm going to read this one verse in the King James version and here it says for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity what does God inhabit very simply and very, very, very profoundly eternity. Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. You know, he doesn't want to dwell in eternity alone. He wants to dwell in eternity with, with you. Like God does live throughout all of the ages, but he wants you to be with him. Isn't that something? He wants you to experience the ages with him. He wants you to know and understand what's really going on from age to age. I love the verse. It says that he's the one who inhabits eternity, but with him also uh, the one that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart 
of the contrite ones. May God do that. May God revive our humble and contrite hearts. And may we humbly look back in our lives and perhaps in the lives of others and see God very much so, right? And see God. In this passage here, where it's, it's the phrase, inhabiteth eternity, we're told that the way this is constructed, the phrase inhabits eternity, can mean that God moves freely in time. Any period of time is accessible to him. Now that's powerful. He inhabits eternity, which means he is with you right now. Can I get an amen? Amen. He is with you as you sit in that chair. He can shout into your soul and wake you up if he so desires. But he is the one that inhabits eternity where he can go into your past. He can reach down deep inside of you and he can inhabit your past at the same time and bring you back there with him and tell you what he did in the past. And show you that when you thought you were alone, he was with you. When you thought that you were broken, he was there. When you thought that you was lost, you could never be lost. Because wherever you are there, he is also. He is so powerful that he inhabits eternity. It doesn't mean that he lives forever. And that means he has the the, the ability to inhabit every period of time. He can go back into into the time when you were with your mother or your father or your grandmother, and then he can open that up and speak to you from that place again. And he says, you want to know what I told you then? When you were a little boy or a little girl and you would pray to God, he has the ability to go back to you in that place and say, do you know what I was telling you? You know how I was calling you? Maybe he just wants to reaffirm to you. He says, when you were a boy, a little girl, he says, I was calling your name. I was calling you. He might say, yes, that was me. Remember that time? Do you have any times when you say you remember that time? I got a couple. You got a couple, brother? I got a couple. I pray you do too. And if not, I pray that God who inhabits eternity will go back into your past to wake you up and say, look at that. That was me in all of my glory. Yeah, that's right. Man, he is definitely El Shaddai. He is God Almighty. He is from age to age, which doesn't mean that he lives forever. It means that he has access to every age and every period of time to your future. He can can speak to your future. You think your future is so set because of some things that you've done. He can speak to your future and he can change it with a word. He can create it. Amen to that. He is so powerful and so almighty. And the beautiful thing is he says this, he says he is not the only one who inhabits eternity. He says you can be there with him too. For those who have a humble and contrite spirit, you may inhabit eternity with him. And you can go back with him and forward with him. Going forward is nice too, right? (laughs) Sometimes you want to do a little bit of going forward. Sometimes. You got to be in a good mood for that. (laughs) <laughs> no, it's like, <laughs> like, what does the future hold? You got to, you can't be sad when you do that because it's no fun for anyone. But every now and again, <laughs> and God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah, not to hurt you, not to harm you. Amen, everybody. I believe that he is El Shaddai, God Almighty. I believe that he is age to age. You know, I do love the many names that God has. Okay, Pop, you know, I knew you were going to click up on that one. (laughs) God has many names, but I'm intrigued by his names. Because, you know, the many names that God has, it's not like it's Joe, Jim, James, Sally, Mary. I'm not talking about that kind of names. (laughs) The many different kinds of names that he has, he has has God kind of names. Praise the Lord. His name is... I am. What kind of name is that? When Moses said, tell me your name. If you want me to go to your people, I better know your name. And he didn't say, yeah, just say Jim sent you. <laughs> no offense, Jim. <laughs> he says, that's James, by the way. <laughs> he said, tell them I am sent you. I guarantee you when Moses said, I am sent you, the ground shook just a little bit. 
And when, when Moses said, I am sent you, that was all they needed to hear because that sounds like a God. <laughs> That's right, I'm following you. You see, I love the names of God because they, oh my goodness, they tell us that he's more than we could ever think or imagine. We have such small minds that would want to define and describe our God. And then if our God is small, sure enough, our lives are small. But if our God is big, then we are also immeasurable. There's something that you cannot weigh and see. There's something extraordinarily invisible about you. Can I get a witness in the house? <laughs> yeah. Not only is his name I am, another name for our God is Yahweh. And Yahweh means he who is. There you go, there's another one. What's, my name is I am, God says, and he who is. Those are the God kind, that's my God. <laughs> that's my God. It's like you answer a question with a question. Who am I? I'll tell you, but you won't understand. <laughs> he who is, come again. Come again, sovereign one, come again. I am he who is. You gonna say something, Pop? <laughs> say it again? Okay, what's well, Josh? Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> he has the God kind of names, Pop. You know, his name indicates the unsearchableness of God. That's what his name indicates. His name indicates his unsearchableness. His name indicates, I'll give you my name, but it's not going to help you because you'll still never know who I fully am. I'll tell you my name, but it's really not going to help you because I'm unsearchable. You'll never come to the end of me. You'll never fully know from generation to generation, from Age to age, you will never comprehend my fullness. That's my God. And that's your God. That's our God from 35 years ago. And it's our God today. He says, I'll be who you need me to be. You want me to be the God of the church that's small and insignificant and just hopping along? I'll be your God. But if you want to be the one that's been around the block for a few and you discovered some of the thing about God is I'll be that God to you, too. Amen. You, you need a little more uh, uh, powerful God. I'll be I'll be a little more powerful. You want me to be bigger? I'll be bigger. You want me to be smaller? You know, he's great enough to say, if you need me to be small, I'll be small for you because I won't overwhelm you and I won't overtake you. If you believe that one plus one is two, we'll stay there. And he'll pat you on the back and he'll say, yes, one plus one is two. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. oh, he's a great God. Because yes. 35 years ago, all we knew was one plus one is two. But now we know like two times two is four. <laughs> yeah. His name indicates the unsearchableness of God. It's more than his mere existence. His name doesn't just say that I exist. Tell me your name. His name says that I am the only thing that exists. I am the only thing that ever was and ever will be. Why are we so lost in the physical world when he is everything? Why, does, why do we live in this world as if it rules over us? Do you know that you are servant to no man? Do you know that? You, yeah, those are good amens, everybody. Those are good amens. You are the servant of God. And he is the only one who owns you. He is the only one that can speak to your life. He is the only one. Yeah, that's right. It's more than he exists. God is so sovereign. He lets us live in our childhood thinking. He lets us live in our smallness. He lets us live in our smallness as if we think it's our duty to prove that there is a God. He doesn't even blank, what, whatever. The small little one that shakes their fist and says, there is no God. He's like, okay, calm down, Jimmy, calm down, Jimmy. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, I love you, Jimmy. I hate you, God. I know, Jimmy, I know, go to your room, go to your room. I'll call you for dinner. he will still love you and feed you and protect you he will still be your god and your father and your everything 
Yeah. Now, that's a simple statement, but it's, it's as deep as you can believe it to be. That's as great as you can allow yourself to believe what that says. So Psalm 90, let's turn there. Moses. Let's read from Moses. He had some good experiences with God. In Psalm 90, the title of this psalm I, I discovered was The Eternity of God and Man's Frailty. The Eternity of God and Man's Frailty. So Psalm 90, Moses wrote Psalm 90. And uh, how do you know, Pop? You were there? So Psalm... <laughs> Uh, maybe. Ah, very good. <laughs> My father helped Moses pen this psalm. So if you all just turn to Psalm 9, you let me know which one was you and which one was him. Okay, here we go. <laughs> all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> it starts off. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world. What does it say there? Even from yeah. Everlasting. Or from age to age, same. You are. That's right. From everlasting to everlasting. From age to age, you are God. Yes. You turn men back to dust, saying, return to dust, O sons of men. What does it say next? Verse 4. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day. That passed. Okay, good. Uh huh. What else? Oh, a watch in the night. Our God is age to age, He is everlasting to everlasting. For a thousand years in the sight of the Lord is as one day. He is the only one that can prophesy as he did through the prophet Isaiah that, 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 that said, uh, a virgin shall give birth and, and, and you shall call his name Emmanuel for God is with you. Only God could have that prophecy be spoken through Isaiah and have it fulfilled 700 years later as if it was just a blink. And all of the world and all of the church world and all of the Israelites could say Isaiah was a false prophet because his words did not come to pass. You and I cannot judge a stinking thing because we don't have the perception, the understanding, nor the mind of God. We want to judge each other as if we know. We know nothing except what we see in the moment and experience in the moment. We don't have full knowledge. Only God with full knowledge who lives in eternity can say Isaiah is not a false prophet. It's going to just take a thousand years for the words to come to pass. That's all. That's right. Right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Man, when we understand the greatness of God, that he is age to age, it, 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 you know what it does? It does what Isaiah says it does. It humbles us. When you discover the greatness of God, it makes you contrite and broken. Yes. You say, who am I to judge? Who am I to speak? I, as Job said, I have spoken words without knowledge as if I know I know nothing. For our God is absolutely unsearchable, and his ways are absolutely past finding out. Amen, everybody? Amen. Yeah, so once again, age to age, it speaks about our God. And, and, and man is just but dust. And, and, and we all go through the different ages and times, and God is going to meet, meet us all at the different ages and times. But he exists in every age. You know, if you're just a child discovering who, the, who God is and the things of God, you know, he is the God of that age. He is the God of the age of the, of, of the child, if you will. Uh -huh. And when you grow up and you learn a little bit more, usually in our youth is when we think we know it all. Can I get an amen from anybody? <laughs> usually in our youth is when we think that, you know, the older generations are morons. And right, that's okay. You, you, you grow out of that. <laughs> um, but, but God is still the God of that age, too. I know in my youth when I thought that I was, you know, knew more than I really did know. God still patted me on the back and told me, oh, you're smart, you're strong. He didn't tell me that I'm an arrogant, rotten kid. <laughs> but I was. <laughs> right? He knows. He's, he's God. We're, we're, we're not. <laughs> 
When you're a child and you, you say one plus one, and he said, you, are, you say what all the parents say about their little children. My Johnny and my sister, I tell you, they're the smartest one in class. Did you know we just tested them? And they have the aptitude. Oh, shut up already. But, but, but a parent doesn't say that. <laughs> a parent says, my child is the smartest. And that's what God would say to you as children. And as a youth, God would not break you because he knows you, he's, you're just finding yourself. You have to discover yourself. You have to believe that you're strong. To the youth are given strength. You have to have it. And God has to encourage you in your strength. He is the God of all the ages. And then when you become or, or attain a certain maturity, because that's, that's endless. When you attain a, cer a, a certain maturity, then, then he builds your confidence. And he tells you who you are. And he wants to send you out. He says, go watch over the young who think they know it all. <laughs> And go take care of the children who absolutely need you, right? Amen. And he is the God of all ages. He is the God of all of our ages. Amen, everybody. Amen. But there's a certain mystery to that. There's a certain mystery to that that I think God wants us to understand today. There's a certain mystery. So let us go on. You see, God's eternity allows him to work out his plan over all the expanse of time. You know, we're only caught in the here and now. And sometimes we can't get past that. But, but his plan, it, it works out through the expanse of, of time. And you know, what, you know what God's plan is primarily, everybody? It's a simple one. And his simple plan is he just wants to have a family. He wants to have sons and daughters, and he wants to raise his children. Uh -huh. Do some of you have sons and daughters? Do you just want to raise your children? Do you want to have children? Or well, the children of the world, whatever. But we believe in family. We believe in relationships. It's the most important thing in life. Is relationships. It's not success or money or acquirements. Never will be. The most important thing in life are the people who you sit next to, people who you spend life with. Huh? It's your family. It's your friends. It's the ones that God's puts in your life, maybe for a short time, maybe for longer than you want them there. <laughs> But he is God, and his ways are past finding out. <laughs> Second Corinthians six eighteen it says, "I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters," says the Lord Almighty. Perhaps the greatest thing that you could ever hear God tell you is, "You're my son. Yes. You're my daughter." Yes. Now I'll be bold enough to say I've heard God say that. Will, will any of you join me and be bold enough to say you've heard God say that? Somebody. Okay, good. And if not, he will. There's nothing greater on earth you could receive. There's nothing greater on earth you could receive than for God to say, you're mine. Hmm. The God of everything, what does he want? Is everybody awake? He just wants you. Because he don't need cars and houses. And he don't need money and titles. And he doesn't have to be important and busy. And he's willing to give it all away. And he did at the cross. Because he wanted one thing. He wanted you. He wanted me. I'm not there yet because I still want everything. It diminishes over the years, right? We want less and less of things and more of him, it, right? And, amen, everybody. We're not that bad, are we? We're getting better. You're getting better. And our greatest teacher is God the Father because he will tell us that family is all that matters. And people and relationships is all that matters. He already led the way. He, he didn't come for anything but you and me. And that's the plan of God throughout all of the ages. The plan of God, everybody, he wants a family. Amen. He wants a relationship. Sometimes he wants, like, you, like a parent would tell a child, I just want to talk to you. <laughs> you got a minute to talk? Yeah, 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 you big pain in my neck. I got things to do here. What do you want? <laughs> 
and then you think, you know, like for my father, he's got this long list, my, and I'll, I'll get it all done because I'm efficient. But he don't want my long list. He's, can you at least say hello to me? I mean, <laughs> ask me how I'm doing. I, who cares what you just did? Means <laughs> use that for an excuse to talk to you. <laughs> what do you think, Pastor Phil? Any insight on this? <laughs> He was looking forward like I wasn't going to call his name. <laughs> He's avoiding my stare. Anyway, <laughs> let me read Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, verses 9 through 11. What does God want? A family. It's his plan from age to age. So Isaiah 46, verse 9 through 11 Something we all know really well, it says, Remember the former things, or remember the former things of old, for I am God, Good, and there is no other. I am God, listen, and there is none like me. You think you know me. I act like nobody else acts. I think like nobody else thinks. I don't think like you, I don't act like you, I don't do like you. I am God, and there is no one like me. Why don't you hang around a while, I'll teach you some things. Yes. He says this, he says, I declare the end from the beginning. I know the end from the beginning. I am the God of the ages. I have the ability to travel through time and eternity, and I can be everywhere at the same time. I know your end from your beginning. I can speak to you in the place that you're at now because I know where you're going to be tomorrow. And really, there's no rush to get there. <laughs> I don't know where you're running off to. <laughs> I didn't learn a thing. So, I declare the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. There are things in your life, everybody, believe it or not, like it or not, there are things in your life that are, maybe you can help me say, they are not yet done. There are things in my life that are not yet done. Sometimes I say, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes I say, I'm tired, but sometimes I say, thank you, Jesus. How about you? Hmm. All right. It says here, my counsel shall stand. And I will do all of my pleasure. This is interesting. Verse 11 says, calling a bird of prey from the east. The man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it and I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it and I will also do it. God will do the miraculous, the impossible. And it is past your finding out. You ever, you ever just wait, stay awake or think about how things are going to happen in your life? You can't figure it out. He says, I will call a bird of prey from the east. I will call, cause a strange person, a foreigner, to come into your life and change you forever. You can't find it. You can't figure it out. You have no idea how I'm going to act and operate in your life. I am past finding out. But make no mistake, I am God. Amen. And we are so much in our minds, and we are so full of thoughts and ideas. And he says, you can never figure me out, so why don't you stop trying? Why don't you stop trying to figure out how this is going to happen and how that's going to happen? It's going to happen. He says, I will call a, a bird of prey from the east, and he will fulfill my will, and, and he will be or she will be my servant, saith the Lord. Amen. And I can say that even as a church from age to age. But we, we thought this church had come to an end, and, and, and at times we wanted it to come to an end, quite honestly, because the struggle is tough. Amen? Amen? How many things have you been through that you wanted to come to an end? But God said no, as if we, and I love that about God because we even think we're in control of our own destiny and our own lives. We're not. That's a good laughter right there. I like that, Reverend. That's really good. We say, I've had enough of this. I'm going to get this out of my life. Okay, try. <laughs> I mean, some things, it, they're coming. They're staying. And that was this house. God wanted this house to remain. Not just the physical building, although it did involve the physical building. Amen. And God will fulfill his plan and he will fulfill his purpose in our lives. And he will do it in ways you could never figure out and never find out. And his, his, his ways are eternal and they have great purpose in them. You know, God is not trying to get money to you. He's not trying to make you successful. He's not trying to make you rich and famous. He, he, he's looking to get eternity in your heart out of you. 
He's looking to get the kingdom of heaven that's invisible inside of you, absolutely visible outside of you. He yeah. wants to make you a believer. He wants to yeah. cause you to be born again. Yeah. He's not trying to get your bills paid. He's not trying to get you a house and a car. My goodness. Yeah. But he'll use that silly, silly stuff because that's where my, our minds are. That's where our tears are. That's where our sweat is. He'll use it. He'll use it all day, every day. And he cares nothing of it. Nothing of it. You are rich and, and, and prosperous and successful no matter what the elements of the exterior say. Amen. The only person you owe in this life is God. Amen. And he is yours and you are his. Amen, everybody. Amen. Yeah, that's right. All God wants, everybody. Listen now. Let's make this real simple. He just wants a family. He just wants you. And the interesting thing is, he gave up everything that you're chasing for you. Amen. Sometimes I think about the early Christian church. And I think about what they did and how they lived. And I think about the church of today. And and, and this is an awakening. It's not a condemnation, but it's an awakening. The church of today, when we pray, I, forgive me, I, I sound like a broken record, but until the record is changed, we'll, we'll continue to declare this. We're always praying for things. If we're sick, we're asking God to heal us. Yes. Why can't you be, be, be a person of faith in the midst of you? How, how come we can't be like the, the Daniel and the lions then, or whomever? Though you slay me, yet will I serve you. Heal me or don't heal me. Cause me to live or die. I don't care. You're mine. Amen. The bottom line is not whether I live or die. The bottom line is not whether I'm sick or whole. It's not like I'm going to cry like a baby until you hear me. Heal me. I will serve you. Amen. It says, it says the, 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 the forefathers and the, for, the, the, the patriarchs and the matriarchs, it says they were, they were cut in half. They were, they were fed to the lions. They were set on fire. All they wanted was God, and nothing could take God from them. They weren't asking for God. Oh, I got the little splinter, Lord. Can you take care of the splinter? They cut him in half. <laughs> I think about um, my prayers. Not absolutely. We have changed. We, we have changed because we... We have changed because God has matured us. I want you to see this. I want you to see God's matured us and he wants to bring maturity into the body of Christ because in childhood there's weakness and sorrow and suffering. The reason why we're still suffering because we're children. But when we grow up, we stop suffering so much. And, and um, you know, uh, um, through the ages, through the ages, God is teaching us that, um, you know, we don't pray for physical things anymore. Oh, well, we're getting there. You're not praying for this job. I, I got this good opportunity. I'm going to pray for this job. I see this house over here. I'm going to pray for this house. I'm going to pray for my bills to be paid. I'm going to pray for this. I'm going to pray for my body to be made whole. I'm going to pray. And we pray for things and things and things. And when I think about the things that we pray for, it's what the early church threw in the garbage to follow Jesus. Well, we pray for a house. They, they gave it away so they could serve Jesus. Amen. We pray for land. They sold theirs so they could do the work of God. We pray for relationships as we should, but they were willing to leave mother and father for the cause of Christ. Yeah. We pray for things that they utterly gave up. When Jesus called his disciples, he says, leave everything you have and follow me. We don't leave everything we have. We do in our religious, I don't know how we religiously phrase it, but well, we don't. We pray for everything. <laughs> We pray, oh, God is a God. We can go a thousand days with that. Oh, he wants you to be rich and successful and prosperous. No, he wants you to grow up. He wants you to grow up where it don't matter anymore and it doesn't speak to you and it doesn't define you. He wants you to grow up where you lay it all down and you go to the cross for Christ. And it doesn't mean you're going to be a poor person because poverty and riches, is, 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 it's, it's not part of our, our, our language, our thoughts. It is what it is. I mean, you're rich no matter what, you know, and, and you'll have different seasons in your life, whatever. Can anybody say whatever to this morning? Amen. Oh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. <laughs> that's just pretty, man. What? Oh, that's great. I got a double whatever. <laughs> whatever. And um, so, you know, I think about what God wanted, and he just wants you. He wants to heal you. He wants to love you. And um, even, even, even... In regard to the ages of time, 
it's not as if God is trying to get us to the finish line necessarily in a physical regard. As if God is trying to um, bring us to a final destination, if you will, called heaven. God is not trying to get you to a final destination. He's not trying to get you matured, you know, just for the sake of maturity or grown up or successful or get, get all the sin. He's not trying to do something in that regard. All God wants to do, are you ready? He just wants to live life with you. Amen. He just wants to live life with you. Sometimes you're mature and sometimes you're a child. Amen. Amen. It's not like you grow from, from child to youth. You, you experience all the ages all the time. Right? I mean, sometimes you're really strong and confident, but sometimes you still act like a child. And guess what? God's with you. Because he's your father. He, he just wants to live life for you. He wants to live life with you when you're strong. And he wants to live life with you when you're weak. He wants to live life when you're rich and when you're poor, when you're sick and when you're well. What does God want to do? Sometimes God's not there to save the day, if you will. Like he's not going to come and heal your sickness. Maybe God just wants to come and sit down next to you in your sick bed and give you some soup. And maybe he wants to love you and wipe the tears from your eyes and put a cold rag on your head and put the covers up over you and make sure you're warm. And maybe he wouldn't heal you for all of the money in the world because he just wants to spend a moment of compassion with you, of kindness with you. Hmm. Maybe he don't want you to come guns blasting, I bind this sick. Maybe, maybe just have a cup of soup with me and I'm cold. Put, can you put that blanket on me and put a little kiss on the forehead and say, I hope you feel better, honey. Maybe we don't know God as much as we think we do. Well, well, well. And maybe God's got it right. Well, the only thing he wants is us. He left everything for us. Let's leave everything for him. Amen. Let him be the God of the ages. Amen. Let us experience the ages. He is the God of the ages. From age to age, he is the same, everybody. I close with this. From age to age, he is the same. Never mind this religious, pious, perfection stuff. Who is he? He's your father. He's your father. He will always be your father. He'll, he'll go through you in the darkness. He'll be with you in the light. He'll comfort you in the storm. Or, you know what? Even every once in a while. <laughs> He's just so extraordinary, he can take a storm away. <laughs> He does that too, you know. <laughs> he still does raise the dead. And he still does heal the sick. He is still God Almighty. He can still turn back time and fly into the future. <laughs> he can still cause the sun to stand still and even cause it to go backwards a little bit. He is an extraordinary God and something about this great God. That's not the badge he wears. The one that he wears is father, <laughs> dad. <laughs> I am your dad. <laughs> Amen, everybody. Amen. I don't know. Let's close with that and meditate upon that. May I stop praise and worship team to come on forward. Curious to see what you selected for our final song. <laughs> Why don't you all stand and join in worship, everybody? God bless you.